We have exciting news about our C10 and C15 remote controls. These remote controls are really great for one-man bands, like if you have a camera operator that at the same time needs to perform a producer function. He can have access to the switcher from the tripod handle, or it could be a similar scenario in an OB van where a producer sits on the front seat and needs to be able to switch some sources. These remote controls are great for those scenarios. And now we have improved them by squeezing our CPU technology into this little package so they connect directly to an Ethernet switch through a single cable. It also means there's a PO module, power over Ethernet, so this cable carries communication and power to the unit. What you cannot see is that they also run the universal firmware we have developed, and that means you can configure how these controllers work without any programming by a simple web interface. When you unwrap your Skahoy controller, it will always perform a default function out of the box. So as you press these buttons, it will select sources on the preview row. This is an auto transition. Here you make a cut. But it's never limited to that because we have the web interface that will allow you to change this. But let's first look at how this controller shipped with the default configuration. So if we load the configuration interface for the controller, what we see is first a graphical representation of the controller, so very easily you can identify what this button does by clicking the button in the interface and it will jump right down to configuration. And you see, for this button, it will issue an ADEM auto command for ME1. You see from the list of features that we could have selected many other things like fade to black or transition style of a particular sort, etc. And likewise, the next button, cut, the next button selects input source number one on preview. Now, these controllers are great for different hardware scenarios because we built something called presets into the configuration utility. And what it means is that the whole um, configuration of the controller can be changed by a simple push of the button when you boot the controller, including the IP address. So, we could use the controller with this setup, but unplug it, move it to another hardware context with a different IP setting and network and switcher, and boot the controller with another preset that works over there. So how do we do that? Well, let's try. So. We now bring the controller into configuration mode with the tip of a pen. We push the button here on the bottom of the controller, hold it until the LED lights up blue. And then we have access to the web interface behind me. So the first thing we'll do is to scroll to the bottom to the preset section you see right here. You see we already have a preset, preset 1, which is the default. It takes up some memory in the controller, so we can have many presets. And now we're going to make a new preset, so we select new here, and then we can give it a name. So let's say I want to create a preset for the hardware context of uh, my friend's uh, video show, okay? So, save to. And then, now I have created a second preset. You see I have now two presets. I have my preset one and the preset two. They are similar right now. But now we're going to change preset number two, my friend's video show. And uh, for this setting, I want to disable input source five and six because there are no cameras connected. So, if I push those buttons, I would have a blank feed. I don't want to risk that. So, by clicking the the buttons of 5 and 6, I now disable this functionality. This is done really quickly. You can see the web interface is crazy fast. Okay, I want the auto button to be fade to black. And I now change it to fade to black, click the button, select fade to black from the list, like that, and I press save, okay? I'm now going to reboot the controller, and a quick way to do that would be to unplug the cable and replug the cable. So, the unit power cycles, and you see two buttons lit here. The one was yellow highlighted and yellow dimmed, and now the controller boots with the preset I just designed for my friend's video show. You see the two buttons on the bottom are disabled 
while the other buttons here will allow us to select sources, to make cut transitions, and to issue a fade to black. Let's just check on the ATEM switcher. See fade to black down here, and I press the auto button. It's going to issue fade to black. I promised you that the change to the original preset would be really easy, and that is related to the buttons when I boot the controller. So quickly look here, and there we go. You see this one is highlighted, the other one is not, but I hold it until it lights up red, and now I go back to preset one, the original preset, and you see now the controller boots for this hardware context.